then I understand I can face criminal charges under the Espionage Act and other legitimate. So statutes. the problem is, of course, that the laptop that belonged to Anthony Weiner that had all of this, all of her emails on it, obviously with the, that stuff was not turned back. That's right? exact. Yes, and when you look at the statutes that are listed in the separation agreement, there's nothing about intent. Director Comey has been very focused on intent in this case, but that is not what the separation agreements read. It's not what people agree to. Right. So, in other words, she agrees to get this stuff back regardless. No matter what, exactly. And if, and if she didn't know that it was on the computer or it's something, that might, that might not get her, not no, get her off correct. the hook. That's correct. Right. And then also today, as you just mentioned with Brett, uh, the president weighed in on FBI Director Comey's investigation, and he seemed very almost dismissive. Yeah, we've got something we're going to hear a little bit about later on. What, I wonder what effect do you think that might have? I think the point that's been missing in this discussion is that President Obama, with all due respect, really has a horse in this race and has a vested interest in the outcome. He was using uh, an alias, a personal account to communicate with Hillary Clinton he, on her he personal Obama, server. Right. Yes, correct. And we know from the State Department, who spoke on the record about this earlier this year, that there are about 18 to 24 records that were held, withheld, citing executive branch deliberations. Now, here's the important thing that sometimes people miss. President Obama's BlackBerry is a high security BlackBerry, and every address, we talked about this last week, every address has to be clear. It's like a VIP list. Oh, wow, so and good. Huma Abedin, in her FBI interview, said to agents, every time Mrs. Clinton changed her address, I had to tell the White House to make sure that his devices would accept it. So this is another admission that the White House understood that she was using this private server for government business and that the president was okay with it and his wow. team was okay with it because they were allowing updates to the email to be made. So he's got a real horse in the race here. He's not speaking as a dispassionate observer to what's happening. Catherine, thank you You're very welcome. much. Well, we'll have more about all this with our political panel later in the show. Now back to the election and the states which will decide the outcome. First, Florida, indispensable to Mr. Trump. A new Quinnipiac poll there has Clinton up by only one, 46 to 45. And a separate CNN poll out for Florida shows Clinton doing slightly better, but only pulling off a two-point lead, besting Trump 49, as you can see there, to 47. A few other states worth noting, Nevada, there the CNN poll has Trump up six. In mid-October, that same CNN poll had Clinton up, two, up by two. Did I say Clinton up six? I meant Trump. In Pennsylvania, Clinton is still ahead, but her lead has diminished some. Clinton is up by four points in the historically blue state. So let's try to make some sense of all this. I'm joined now by the veteran political strategist and Fox News contributor Carl Rove and by the pollster Darren Shaw, who is responsible for our Fox News polls and is likewise is also, I should say, a member of the Fox News decision desk. Carl, Dar Darren, thanks very much. Darren, let me go to you first quickly. Um, your thoughts on this, these poll results, uh, I assume that they would mean that Donald Trump has a path, uh, and probably a little wider path than it's been, but still not exactly a freeway to the election, right? <laughs> I think that interpretation is right, Britt. I mean, the, the thing that I would point out is, you know, there's a little bit of variation, not a lot, but a little bit of variation in the point estimates. You know, is he down two points or three points? That, that's meaningful, and we want to pay attention to that. But as you correctly observed, it's the trend, I think, that people are really kind of uh, ought to pay attention to right here. So even in the, the polls that have been most generous to Mrs. Clinton, you know, Trump has basically chopped about three points off her lead across this, these set of states. But, all, you know, I think all that's essentially done is gotten him from a sure loss to a position where he's on the verge of being competitive again, which is something a lot of us didn't think was in the cards about a week and a half ago. Carl, your thoughts? I think Darren's absolutely right. Um, uh, th there was good news for both candidates in these polls. For Trump, Arizona is firming up and, and remain in the column with its 11 electoral votes. Nevada, a swing state, moving into his column. Uh, uh, and good news, though, for her. She's holding Pennsylvania, which is 20 electoral votes, and more importantly, she's doing better in Florida than she has in, in, in recent uh, polls. Think about this. There's the so-called blue wall. These are the 18 states in the District of Columbia that the Democrats have won in every one of the last six presidential elections, 242 electoral votes. She wins Florida and the blue wall. She's president of the United States. Florida is the must-win state for Donald yeah. Trump in order to stay alive. He has to have it, yeah. yeah. Um, so... He, he, Romney got 206 electoral votes, um, uh, and Obama got 332. Um, so Clinton, had, if she simply holds his states, right, uh, she's president. But she's down in Ohio. She's down in Ohio, and she's down in Iowa. And she's down in Iowa, and she's down in the real clear politics average in Florida. In Florida. 
So, but if he so if he wins all of those, uh, Darren, all three of those, he's still not home, though, right? That's exactly right. Uh, I mean, you know, we've been talking for a long time about Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida as being the linchpin states to, you know, Trump being a position to win. I think that's still the case. I think he needs those. And as Carl pointed out, Nevada, I think, is increasingly obvious, has to be part of his coalition. And that gets him to within striking distance. But he still needs to, to knock off New Hampshire or Colorado or Pennsylvania, one of these other blue states. And even though he's crept within distance here, within striking distance, he's not there yet. So I, I, I agree with Carl's statement. There's some good news for her here. She seems to be holding steady. And this is even assuming he locks down a state like you know, North Carolina or Florida. And there's no evidence he's done that yet. He's still in a dogfight. In fact, she's probably got a slight edge in those states. Yeah, and, and, we're, and North Carolina, we've been talking about North Everybody's talking about North Carolina this week. Yeah. North Carolina, of course, was carried... Uh, by Mitt Romney, if I remember correctly, Correct. and 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 uh, she's a. Head there, and if he loses that state, his path becomes not quite insurmountable, but, but I mean a, a very tall order. Yeah, particularly since she uh, has a strong lead. This the plus thing else. She's still president of the United States. Well, Virginia was part of the that was part of the Obama uh, combination in in uh, 2012, and, and, and that looks and out two, and that's out of reach. And 2008 as well. Yeah, correct. That, and that looks out of reach to you, correct? Uh, I, I believe so. If you take a look at the real clear politics average, it's up there with with Pennsylvania in the in the high. Now I, I know it's hard to assess at this stage the effect of these revelations in recent days and the reopening of the email investigation, and of course we've got what what Brett was just here talking about. Um, do we have any sense from this polling yet whether this is having a dramatic effect, a mild effect, or was it simply about where you thought th this is, does this now lie, about where you thought it would lie with the kind of late closing that we've seen in so many races? Well, I think it was late closing. Uh, I think it is, the, the Friday announcement is having an effect. I don't think we're yet seeing it in the polls because most of these polls, the CNN polls were conducted after Friday. I'm, I'm, I'm dubious about polls conducted over the Hall uh, Halloween weekend, right. so I think it may be tomorrow or the next day before we see it, but the problem is each side is so intractably tied into itself. 95% per, of uh, Clinton supporters in ABC Washington Post they had an unfavorable opinion of Trump, 90% of them strongly unfavorable, 97% of Trump supporters had an unfavorable opinion of Clinton, 90% of them strongly, and the undecideds and, and third party uh, that were up for grabs, seven or eight percent. Darren, Carl, thank you both very much. There are new WikiLeaks emails out today that make clear the Clinton campaign was worried about those allegations of pay for play involving, as we've talked about, the Clinton Foundation. Fox News Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry has the story. As Donald Trump continues to hammer his message that he'll root out corruption in Washington. We are going to Washington, D.C. And we are going to drain the swamp. WikiLeaks poured gasoline on the flames by releasing its 26th batch of emails from Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta's hacked Gmail account. In one email, campaign spokesman Brian Fallon laid out what seemed like a routine plan in 2015 to release Bill and Hillary Clinton's income tax returns. But buried in the email are Fallon's concerns about how activity at the Clinton Foundation might spark even more pay-for-play allegations. Quote, reporters will also scrutinize the 2013 speech list for overlap between speech hosts and campaign and foundation donors that could fuel pay-to-play storylines, wrote Fallon. Despite these inevitable angles, we will have given ourselves the best possible fighting chance of promoting the most helpful storylines. Thank you. Fallon was particularly worried about the former president's ties to Laureate University, a for-profit college which paid him nearly $18 million to be an honorary chancellor. Another email getting special attention appears to show a Justice Department official trying to tip off the campaign about developments in the Clinton email probe last year. In an email chain titled Heads Up, Assistant Attorney General Peter Kadzik warns Podesta about a congressional hearing and a government filing that could push release of Clinton's emails into the 2016 campaign window. Podesta forwarded the warning to others in Clinton's inner circle with the quote, additional chances for mischief. And since Kazakh is now an important player at the Justice Department when it comes to notifying Congress about developments in the FBI's probe of Huma Abedin's email and Clinton's server, Probably Republican so Donald Trump cried foul on the campaign trail. One of the top Department of Justice officials 
involved in the email investigation, Assistant Attorney General Peter Kazik is a close associate of John Podesta. Podesta's relationship with Kazik goes way back. The two are college buddies, and Kazik served as Podesta's lawyer during the investigation into the Monica Lewinsky scandal. In a previous WikiLeaks dump, Podesta commended Kazik during a 2008 email exchange, calling him a fantastic lawyer. Kept me out of jail. But the Justice Department is downplaying Kazik's more recent contact with Podesta since his email in 2015 focused on a public hearing and a public filing about the email scandal. And even some Republicans like Trey Gowdy note, Kadzik has a limited role in the Aberdeen probe. But Peter Kadzik is not a decision maker, he is a messenger. And the Clinton camp tonight is dumping all over Donald Trump's charge that there's something improper here. There's two problems though, two stubborn facts for the Clinton camp tonight. Number one, they've told us for well over a year there was this firewall between the Justice Department and the Clinton camp and they weren't getting any information. And if this was just public information and not important, you have to wonder why Kazik did not put it on his Justice Department email. He put it on his Gmail. And look, Britt, a lot of people use Gmail. A lot of people use personal email in the workplace. But not when you're at Justice, yeah. not when you're at the no, White not House. Not when you're in Justice, communicating with the White House. Uh, yes, because this is about public records. There's federal laws saying that you have to use your official email, especially because their story is he was talking about Justice Department information, exactly. a hearing, a filing. Right. They don't want to hear that tonight. Great. Ed, Good thanks to see very you. much. Thanks. Right now, let's speed read some other news in the world of politics. The Republican National Committee is now starting to spend a lot of money on TV ads supporting Donald Trump. That's a change in plans from earlier in this cycle. However, now with the polls tightening, the RNC is funding at least $3 million in TV ads for Trump. Some of those ads attack Clinton over the FBI investigation and will air across the country. Iran's Supreme Leader says both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump's comments in the debates were, quote, sufficient for the annihilation of the reputation of the U.S. In his speech today, he also described Americans as liars, untrustworthy, and backstabbers. Last month, Iran's President Hassan Rouhani described Trump and Clinton as bad and worse, but he did not specify which was which. Remember Rachel Dolezal, the, the white woman who pretended to be black and became the head of an NAACP chapter out west? Inquiry have on the closing days of this campaign. Also, President Obama says he knows why the White House race is so close. So what does he think is to blame? We'll tell you that coming up. Stay tuned.